These were the opening moves of Magnus Carlsen with white versus Gata Kamsky with black and F5 on the board. Who dares play the Jenit Schliemann Gambit against Magnus Carlsen? Try saying that 10 times in 10 seconds. Not easy. Now, who is Gata Kamsky? Well, he was a former world number four at his peak. An incredibly strong player. He's a bit older now. He's kind of turned into Vladimir Kramnik's apprentice. I'm sorry, man, but you're starting, you're getting annoying now. You're getting annoying with your engine moves. Too many engine moves, man. But he's very dangerous in his own right. And look at how he takes the fight to Magnus here. Magnus is the one supposed to be playing dubious stuff. Not the other way around, right? So Magnus goes D3. This looks familiar to the Prague game in the candidates just now. By the way, why am I not covering that today? Well, the time zone stuff is horrendous. I was starting to look like this. No one cares next day when the games have been covered, right? I'll do the the odd one but it's gonna be a bit hit and miss now back to this one we get takes d3 was principled because if magnus had taken e4 comes now we see knight f6 castles and bishop c5 aggressive because if you go d6 starts getting very passive so this one selected and magnus could keep his light squared bishop in a way the strong guys usually want to do that right but magnus decides to chop pawn recaptures if the d pawn had gone the ladies would come off the board in that staring contest and now magnus takes this pawn this is why he gave up the bishop pair and this is why the opening is dubious you're down a pawn but you get some activity castles knight d2 a5 securing this bishop a bit more allowing some retreat room as well we get knight d3 hitting that bishop it retreats and pawn e5 the knight centralizes but magnus with the space knight f3 technically best a stable square but knight e4 played now we get d6 c4 from magnus explosive counter strike but nice from gatta he doesn't move the knight he counters with bishop to f5 this is why the knight is less stable on the e4 square what does magnus do retreat hit this bishop here now we see takes on d3 Gata giving back the bishops. Why? Well, now he gets knight b4, tempo on the queen, and takes here on e5, looking for some dynamic play with his queen, with his knight one day hopping. Bishops on a line, rooks on a line, but look at the pawn structure I've highlighted. Magnus eats this stuff for breakfast. He starts with bishop e3, compromising his own pawn structure, but this was a powerful piece. Why doesn't he take with the queen? Well, then there's knight c2, Forktown for Gata, population Magnus. So this one played, queen d3, a good move, very hard to live with that one there. And Magnus now, he just blinks. What should he do? We'll take the pawn immediately or chop the rooks. This is a sample line, hitting two more pawns with the white queen. So black's forced to go for something like this, hit the rook, hit the pawn. This is a sample line, ladies coming off the boards and the cannons, and this is an end game of level material, but you can just see the march of the king, right? Imagine how Magnus would feast on these weaknesses. But okay, not played. Magnus does an immediate B3. Why do I reference this? Well, when the ladies leave the board, now we get takes with check, rook recaptures, and the pawn drops. Magnus is now in an end game, a pawn down. And if he'd gone with the king, well, still there's problems. Knight c2, it, whoops, hits these two pawns here, so one of them is going to drop. Magnus decided better to drop this, although not according to the engine. This is how the game went. A pawn dropping, rook a1, knight b4, king f2, and yes, we're in an end game. Magnus is forte right, but Gatta playing like a master here, a pawn up and doing the right things, bringing his own king to the center. Magnus expands, h4, knight c2, tickling the rook. It jumps up to a4, g6 on the board, 
board. Now king d2 hits the knight. Gata spots it. They've still got just under a minute each. We get king c3, and now this is just a fantastic move. Love the activity that Gata generates here. He jumps with this pawn into c5. He doesn't want the knight to just blockade everything, tie him down. Magnus, of course, takes, but the c6 square was vacated. This was Gata's point. These pawns now rock solid and the rook's free to activate. We get king d3, rook b8 played, eyeballing this pawn here. Rook a3 covers, now king d6, hits the knight, which checks, king e6 back. King e2, and we get some shuffly kind of moves here. Black trying to invade, Magnus shutting it down. Rook d8 to hit the open file. So check, king back, king e2 to stop the rook invasion. Rook b8 now, knight e4, king f5. Does Magnus want to repeat? Hell no. He's the stronger player, always pushing it right. So he goes knight f6. Uh, aggressive move, but not the best move. That knight's on a dodgy circuit now. e4, shutting down its path back to e4. And this knight now has a hop to e5. Now, if Magnus goes knight d5 immediately, sure targets here but the black king waltzes into the position. So first king f2, looking whoops for king g3 here, but rook d8 and Magnus not quite in time. Rook a2 covers the second rank invasion. Rook d3 though comes, hitting two pawns, and rook b2. There's a passive move. Miserable, not like Magnus. Knight e5 played. We are seeing the unthinkable here. Magnus Carlsen getting squeezed like a boa constrictor in an endgame. What is going on? Knight d5 played, and it's a massive blunder. Can you find the best move here for black? Test your tactical skills. So the move played here, sorry, not played, should have been played, is rook takes on d5. Because after pawn captures, you land this big fork. Not so easy to see because you're landing on a square which was taken by the rook. But missed. Gata goes c6. The knight goes check. Now king e6. Now the knight comes on a new circuit here. Very, very miserable. Stuck over in the corner. Knight g4 check. King g3. And Gata's on fire. He doesn't even pick up the pawn straight away. Allow king f4. He first comes in with the king to block this square. Now we see rook e2 covering. But takes with check anyway. The knight recaptures. Again black. A strong pawn ahead. And this one is so offside. Knight f5 check. King f2. Now knight e7 to cover c6. In walks the black king after wasting a tempo there. Magnus under fire. Can he pull out any tricks here? He brings the knight around, but the h-pawn now dropping. And here Magnus is getting trousered. Apparently a word they say in Russian. Two pawns coming down the board like trouser legs or pants, as you say in the States, right? How do you stop them both with knight and king? Well, impossibly or with great difficulty, right? Knight f3 tried by Magnus, but this is an exquisite move from Gata. He doesn't even carry on with the king marching and everything. Allow c5. He goes knight d4 check. Brilliant move, distracting the knight, but then the h-pawn runs through. Unstoppable, so Magnus munches on e3. Queen made, c5, and after check, Magnus Carlsen resigns. The pawn is dropping here, and with it, the game, you've got a queen against a knight at the end of the day. Great game by Gata Kamsky, taking Magnus down with the Jenit Schliemann Gambit. Give it a go, see how you get on. Do subscribe if you love these recaps, never miss a future video. And for another crazy Magnus game, check out the video on screen, and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers.